the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in one true God. Amen. Dearly beloved in Christ, as we are going through the weeks after the new Sunday, especially the gospel readings is very important for our spiritual life. We have heard uh, the gospel according to John chapter 6 on the third day of the after the new Sunday. And we look at uh, the whole complete gospel according to John. We can see a theme of uh, very divinity of Jesus Christ. A pattern. The same reading we can see as well after the Pentecost. So, the Gospel writer, Saint John, want to establish something. Because we came across so many times this chapter. Hear the discourse of Jesus about the bread of life. It's a very prominent theme in this chapter, chapter 6. The very idea of bread is developed through the various stages in this gospel. Jesus' discourse began with the feeding of multitudes. The idea of physical need for food and our physical need is developed through the miracle of multiplying the loves. Or in other ways, John is portraying that Jesus identifying himself the physical food the need of the people, those who are destitute, those who are vagrant, those who are poor, or those who are less fortunate. So he want to emphasize, give identity to Jesus to those part of the world, those population. The Gospel of John is already established a backdrop to the need of eternal drink and eternal food. As we look at chapter 4, when he told the story of Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman. This discourse in John 6 is having all the hallmark, all the ingredients, all the pattern, all the principles of what the Jewish teachers is teaching, how they exceed the will of God. The main idea of Jesus here is as God. It is developed through the gospel from chapter 1 to the end, chapter 20. The discourse in John 6 is very much connected to the Old Testament teachings or exegesis. Many of the words, many of the phrases used in the Gospel of John should only be understood in the light of the Old Testament teachings. Jesus fulfills the Messianic expectation of the Jewish people. And he emphasizes himself as the bread of God. When he comes down from heaven and gives life to this world. So John want to portray this as the central theme of his gospel. But we should know that the expectation of a prophet they establishing a kingdom as always part of the eschatological aspiration of the Jewish people. Moses, a prophet who fed the hungry at the desert, and now Jesus is doing the same thing. 
he multiplying the loaves and feeding the hungry. So he is in line with the, the messianic expectation what the Jewish people were thinking about. So it is now easy for John, it is easy to establish a correlation between the feeding of the multitudes and the feeding of manna by Moses. For the Jewish people, manna is given by Moses on the desert. It's always in their backdrop. Thinking. Whatever they think about or thought about the coming of Messiah, people expect such miracles from the Messiah. Whom? They are going to establish uh, the Jewish kingdom. That's what they thought. Uh, so it is a natural expectation for them at the Messianic time that uh, the miracle of manna is going to be repeated again and again and again. That was their thought. So John knew about that. Even we look at uh, the second book of Baruch, the chapter 29, verse 8, it is mentioned there very clearly that God, it shall come to pass that uh, the same time that the treasury of manna shall again descend uh, from the Most High. So that was the thinking or backdrop of the Jewish people, Jewish prophet that uh, in the messianic time uh, that should happen. So here John want to emphasize, John want to establish a credential for Jesus as Messiah. The geographical location of both incidents are similar. When Moses was receiving the manna it was against the backdrop of the Mount Sinai. When Jesus was multiplied his loves, it is also at the backdrop of a mountain. So everything is so similar. A messianic banquet is clearly is taking place here. As prophesied by the great prophet Isaiah in chapter 25. The relationship between, further we can see, the using of I am, the bread of life. It is taking us back to the same I am in the Exodus by God. I am who I am. So here also, before Abraham, I am in Exodus chapter 8. As a close relationship, the I am statement. Perhaps it is enough to say that John hears uh, the resonance of, uh, of Messiah is connected with Yahweh. If you look at I am statement in so many times by Jesus, we can see, we can draw a cross relationship. John wants to establish the divinity, the pure the whole divinity of Jesus. That's why chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. Chapter 8, I am the light of this world. And I am the resurrection and the life. It's going, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Chapter 14, I am the true wine. Chapter 15, so every time, it's, it's a progress but the one in the fourth box well, makes himself the critical issue. I am uh, the sister boss. I am the bread of life. Jesus here declares that the point of sign at this point in any miracle is not now the matter. You have to look at. You don't have to look at men now. You don't have to look at the material bread. But uh, himself uh, is the manna. Jesus himself 
is the bread. He is the bread. He is the Messiah coming from heaven. He is the bread coming from heaven. That is the idea John wants to emphasize here. That's why Jesus is offering more than what they expected. Ask himself. So, from the beginning of the chapter to the end, we can see a progressive way of establishing the divinity of Jesus. Through all these aspects, the miracles, the I am statement, and all the incidents and events. So, he is the Messiah. He is our Lord. Jesus is the true bread of life. Let us meditate this week on this thought. As Lord become our bread of life. As we receive through the Holy Eucharist. He is dwelling in us. This should be our thought. He is the true God. Thank you for listening. Thank you and God bless you.